on the pharmacology of epilepsy. Epilepsy is characterized by a high risk of recurrent seizures. It affects over 50 million people worldwide and can be controlled by medication but usually not cured. When examining the pharmacology of epilepsy, there are a number of receptors and channels we will be concerned with. The NMDA receptor. NMDA stands for N-methyl-D-aspartic acid. The AMPA receptor. The AMPA stands for alpha-amino-3-hydroxy-5-methyl-4-isoxazole propionic acid. And the GABA receptor. GABA stands for gamma-amino-butyric acid as well as sodium and calcium channels. Here we have a representation of a postsynaptic neuron. It has NMDA, AMPA and GABA receptors as well as sodium and T-type calcium channels. Each receptor has a number of sites on it upon which neurotransmitters and drugs may act. An example is the glycine site on the NMDA receptor, glutamate sites present both on the NMDA and AMPA receptors, the barbiturate site, the GABA site, and the benzodiazepine site present on GABA receptors. To begin with, we will focus on the glutamate site of the NMDA receptor. An epileptic focus generates an action potential which travels to presynaptic glutaminergic neurons. This causes vesicles containing the neurotransmitter glutamate to move towards the presynaptic membrane, eventually fusing with it. Glutamate is an excitatory neurotransmitter which will cause the action potentials from the epileptic focus to advance. If lamotrigine an anti-epileptic medication is administered, it will stop glutamate from being released from glutaminergic neurons. This stops the epileptic action potentials from spreading, reducing the likelihood of seizures occurring. In the absence of lamotrigine, glutamate is released into the synaptic cleft and binds to the glutamate site of the NMDA receptor. This causes the opening of the ion channel leading to an influx of sodium ions. In turn, this causes depolarization and excitation, propagating the action potential which started from the epileptic focus. This will cause generalized excitation, resulting in the characteristic seizures seen in epilepsy. The NMDA receptor also contains a glycine site, to which the anti-epileptic felbamate binds. The binding of felbamate to the glycine site closes the ion channel, stopping sodium from entering. The end result is that the action potential from the epileptic focus is not propagated, avoiding a seizure. Next we will look at the AMPA receptor. Again, when an action potential leaves the epileptic focus and reaches the glutaminergic neuron, glutamate is released. As mentioned before, the anti-epileptic lamotrigine stops glutamate release from glutaminergic neurons. In the absence of lamotrigine, glutamate is released and binds to the glutamate site of the AMPA receptor, opening the channel. Sodium ions enter the postsynaptic neuron through the channel, causing depolarization, excitation and spread of the epileptic action potentials, causing seizures. So pyramid binds to the glutamate site of the AMPA receptor without causing the channel to open. When glutamate is then released from glutaminergic neurons after stimulation by an epileptic focus, it travels across the synaptic cleft but cannot bind to the glutamate site on the AMPA receptor as it is blocked by topyramid. Therefore the action potential from the epileptic focus cannot advance, stopping a seizure from developing. Let's look at the GABA receptor. The GABA receptor has three sites. The barbiturate site, the GABA site, and the benzodiazepine site. 
GABA is taken up by GABAergic neurons and packaged into vesicles. Some is metabolized by GABA transaminase or GABA-T to produce succinic semi-aldehyde. The remainder is released into the synaptic cleft. Here it binds to the GABA site of the GABA receptor and causes the channel to open. Chlorine ions enter the postsynaptic neuron causing hyperpolarization and inhibition. This reduces the likelihood of an action potential being propagated, reducing the chances of seizures occurring. There are two other sites on the GABA receptor, the barbiturate site and the benzodiazepine site. Phenobarbital acts on the barbiturate site and diazepam acts on the benzodiazepine site. These act to allow more chlorine ions to move throughout the channel and into the postsynaptic neuron, causing greater hyperpolarization and inhibition, further reducing the chances of seizures occurring. As mentioned, GABA is taken up into GABAergic neurons, but the anti-epileptic drug tiagabine can prevent this from happening. This allows more GABA to reach the GABA site on the GABA receptor, bypassing breakdown by GABA-T into succinic semi-aldehyde. The amount of GABA broken down to succinic semi-aldehyde can also be reduced by the addition of the anti-epileptic medicines valproate and vigabatrine. Valproate and vigabatrine are GABA-T inhibitors. By blocking the action of GABA-T, valproate and vigabatrine cause more GABA to be released from the GABAergic neurons to travel across the synaptic cleft and bind with GABA sites on the GABA receptor. As mentioned, this causes the associated channel to open, allowing chlorine ions to enter the postsynaptic neuron, causing hyperpolarization and inhibition of action potentials, which could lead to seizures. The postsynaptic neuron also has a number of sodium channels present. When sodium channels are open, sodium ions move into the postsynaptic neuron, causing depolarization and excitation, which can lead to proliferation of any action potentials from an epileptic focus. Phenytoin and carbamazepine block these sodium channels, stopping sodium from entering and reducing the likelihood of epileptic focus action potential propagation. This reduces the risk of seizures occurring. In a similar way, open T-type calcium channels allow calcium to enter the postsynaptic neuron, causing depolarization and excitation. This allows the epileptic focus action potentials to spread further. However, ethosuximide blocks T-type calcium channels, stopping calcium from entering the postsynaptic neuron and therefore reducing the chances of seizures occurring.